Hey guys, so today we are going to be doing a reaction I read about online where we can react hydrogen with neodymium magnets. Now, these magnets are out of hard drives. And I crushed them up, well, I chunked them up as best as I could um, to get as much surface area exposed. And I tried to take off as much of the coating, that nickel coating that's on the surface. Um, I couldn't get it all off, but I got a lot of it off. It should make a difference. So what we need to do is figure out first how much we have here. Looks like 16.61 grams. Okay, so this is what I'm going to use uh, to soak it in hydrogen. Uh, we're going to be putting sodium hydroxide and aluminum in here to generate hydrogen and then pump it up to this jar. Uh, the reason why I have it coming through a distillation chamber is because this produces an awful lot of water vapor and I'm hoping to condense a lot of it before we collect the hydrogen. Um, this cap, it's got a big hole for the hose to come from here and uh, go up in there. There's a smaller hole as well. This is to let the heavier atmospheric gases leak out of the jar as the hydrogen rises to the top and fills it from the top down. Uh, I've also, in this cup, got holes drilled in the bottom. So while it's, while it's up in here, uh, atmospheric gases doesn't get trapped in this cup as the hydrogen is filled in the chamber. It'll let the gases, the heavier gases seep out the bottom and allow this to fill with hydrogen. Now, they say in the paper that, I'm gonna link the paper as well in the description, but they say in the paper um, that this is an exothermic reaction. But they also say they did it over a two hour period. So I'm hoping it's not so exothermic it's going to melt this little plastic cup. Um, I've not actually done this reaction yet. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to get all these joints greased up and get this tube connected and uh, we'll get this reaction started. Okay, so now I have all of the joints greased up and the clamps put on and I've got the hose running up to the jar. Now the way this is going to fill is the hydrogen is going to come up and it's going to fill the jar from the top and slowly fill its way down. And uh, the atmospheric gases are going to leak out this hole. Not to mention this over here with the tube isn't perfectly sealed, so some's going to come out there as well. Now I'm willing to bet that I'm going to have to start this reaction several times because they let this go for two hours. Um, and that was at two bar, or roughly double atmospheric pressure. And I'm not gonna, I'm gonna be running at normal atmospheric pressure, so I'm willing to bet it's gonna take a little bit longer. Um, I don't know how fast it's gonna run or how it's gonna look, but we're gonna find out. Okay, so I have the sodium hydroxide solution in the round bottom flask, and I'm gonna add some aluminum and then hurry up and put the distillation apparatus together. We don't need to go in too vigorously. I mean, there's not a whole lot of area inside of that um, jar. Okay. I think that's gonna do it. We'll put the cat clip on to hold it. Okay, so as you can see, it is starting to react nice and slowly, and, but it's bubbling. Um, it's going to get hot, so any vapor should get caught and drop down. Um, I'm, because I'm not running a whole lot of vapor through this, I'm hoping that I can run this dry and it's going to condense everything just fine. Um, but we're going to check in periodically on this and see how it's doing. So I let this run all night while slowly adding aluminum and allowing hydrogen to pass through. Um, I accidentally bumped a jar a little bit and that's why it's sitting off to the side. But it does not appear to have done much. 
Um, one of the biggest characteristics of the reaction would be that it's going to turn to powder as well as uh, lose its magnetism. And it doesn't appear that neither has happened. So what we're going to have to do is, uh, I'm guessing, put it under pressure. So uh, I'm going to have to bust out the autoclave and see if we can't uh, build up some pressure with hydrogen and get it to react that way. So what we're going to be using to uh, generate pressure uh, with the hydrogen and the magnets is this autoclave. Now, this isn't going to be able to get up to the two full bar uh, that they said that they had done inside of the, or in the paper. Um, but we should be able to get up to a good one and a half bar, which would at least let us know, hopefully, that if something's going to happen, it will. Um, as for the magnets, it didn't really have any sort of reaction at all. They're still pretty strong. They got a full pull, no coloration, discoloration at all. So, I don't think anything happened with that last test. Hopefully this time something will. So what I'm going to do is, uh, first off, this has got a tube that runs to the bottom of the tank. And uh, that should uh, vent out any of the heavier gases that gets pushed downward by the hydrogen and vent it out. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get a reaction of sodium hydroxide and aluminum going in here in a small beaker um, and have the neodymium magnets in here as well. Uh, I'm going to probably use an Erlenmeyer flask because I don't want any splashing or anything from the uh, sodium hydroxide because it will react with the aluminum of the, audio, of the autoclave here. I'm not entirely sure how well this is going to seal, um, especially you know considering the hydrogen. These are really meant for boiling water in and sterilizing equipment. Um, but we'll test it out and we'll see how it works. I'll go ahead and get everything set back up and or set up and I'll pick up the camera. So this is the way I'm gonna have things arranged inside the autoclave here. Uh, I've got the magnets set up right here and uh, they're on top of a beaker just to get them up closer to the top of the autoclave where more hydrogen will be. Uh, and then over here is where I'm going to have the sodium hydroxide and aluminum mixture. Uh, I just stuck this on top to prevent any extra splashing that might come out. Uh, the hydrogen will push it up and bubble, as it bubbles out. Um, one, one downside of this method is that uh, I only have one shot to get up to pressure. I'm going to have to get the sodium hydroxide and aluminum reaction going at full pace, essentially, to get this filled up. Uh, and two pressure, which means it's going to bubble and, and spit. I like to do it slowly, like I had in this apparatus here. I could just drop in little bits of aluminum to fill up the jar up top, uh, and then just do that slowly. Uh, I'm only going to have one shot this, this go around, uh, because as soon as I crack it, it's going to lose pressure. Um, but I'll go ahead and drop this in, and uh, we'll see how it works. So I went ahead and got everything dropped in and let it start pressurizing. And it appears that we have a leak at this uh, safety valve. Um, there was a little bit of water in there just because I washed this, rinsed it off before I stuck it on here. And so there's a bit of water in there, but that's what you see bubbling. So I do not think this is going to get up to pressure, not even a little. Okay. So I went ahead and let uh, the hydrogen in this tank sit, uh, even though I wasn't building up pressure just to see if anything would happen, and nothing really. It's pretty much the same. Uh, not even really a, a color change on the magnets yet. Um, so on this plug, I had put on uh, some a little bit of grease, um, petroleum jelly in the hopes that uh, it might soak a little bit up or seal it just a little bit better. Uh, I mean, this autoclave is fairly old and I haven't used it in a, in a long time, years and years and years. Um, so it's probably just that the rubber shrunk a little bit and uh, I'm hoping a little bit of oil will let it expand. Um, even though I had that thing on top of the Erlenmeyer flask, we still did get a little bit of sodium hydroxide leak out. You can see it where it reacted. So I'm just gonna put in um, a lid off of a jar and set it on top of that 
and that should stop it from happening again. Um, but we're going to go for attempt number three to react these magnets. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and drop in a strip of aluminum foil into the sodium hydroxide mixture and then get the top on and see how it works. Okay, so I was able to get this up to about 10 PSI. Putting the uh, petroleum jelly on the plug seemed to have done the trick. <clears throat> I also put a bit of water in there and as well as around the other joints just to see if any bubbles come out if there's a leak. Um, I've obviously got a leak somewhere that it's around the sides here. Uh, because it's losing pressure, um, but it stopped at about 10 psi. I did let a bit of pressure out uh, with this uh, because there's a hose that goes to the bottom uh, and that was to get rid of some of the atmospheric gases that were in there. But uh, I'd say if I didn't do that, I maybe would have gotten 15 psi, maybe. Um, so I don't think I had enough sodium hydroxide and aluminum loaded into the beaker. Uh, but still, since I have pressure built up, um, I'm going to go ahead and let it sit and let it react, see if it will. Uh, I don't know how long it's going to keep pressure, because uh, like I said, I hear a bubbling sound from somewhere, but I can't find it. Um, so I know I'm losing pressure somewhere. It's just a matter of how long it's going to take for it to go back to atmospheric pressure. Um, but I'll let it sit there and react until it does. Okay, so this is test number four. Um, we got a lot more sodium hydroxide in here. Got more aluminum to throw in there. Um, because I expect a bit more of a reaction, I put it in kind of like a jar thing here. Um, so that way if anything spills out, it's contained rather than corroding the rest of this aluminum. Um, I might may even find something else to put this in before I actually shut everything up. Uh, but in an effort to maintain pressure, uh, I have covered the rim of this with a bit more petroleum jelly um, in the efforts to hopefully seal the edges up here a little bit better. Um, it, it seemed fairly sealed, but it was obviously leaking. Um, from the last uh, experiment, there, I believe there is a slight discoloration on these magnets. Focus, come on. Um, but it's very slight if there is any, uh, and it's still fairly strong uh, or has a fairly strong attraction to each other, so it's not losing its magnetism either. Um, so this is attempt number four. I will pick it back up once I get it started. Okay, so it appears that it is actually holding pressure now, and it's building it up pretty quick. It's hard to hard to see that. Um, I'm not entirely sure how much I I trust this pressure gauge either, but. Um, we're gonna, I guess, like I said, the, the safety valve on this will blow at 26 PSI, which is just a bit under two bar, which is what that paper said they were able to react to that. I'm hoping that I can get it to a, a bit lower pressure, like one and a half, and just let it sit for longer, and perhaps that would make a difference. Um, I've already vented a lot of the atmospheric air from the bottom, uh, so what's in there now should be a lot of hydrogen. Uh, let's we'll hope we get a reaction this time. So here I was thinking, I got all the leaks fixed because it was building pressure. Um, and I went to go check it on it again, and I hear yet another leak, and I think it's coming from this release here. Let's see, I'll put the mic up so you can see if you can hear it. So it's looking like uh, I'm going to have to, I mean, I'll let this sit. It, it doesn't sound like a... Um, a fast leak but I'm supposed to let it sit for two to four hours at room temperature so I doubt it's gonna hold pressure for that long um, I'll let it sit for as long as it does hold pressure and then uh, once it's done we'll open it back up and we'll see if we can't fix this this other leak here okay so I sprayed this with water we'll see if we can get this to focus I found my bubbles if I can hold it steady You can see the bubbles right there. So it's at that thread. I'll probably have to take that apart, throw some uh, Teflon tape in there, and tighten it back down and see if that'll fix it. Okay, guys, so I took the magnets out of uh, the autoclave on this last run, and it did appear that we started to get a reaction. Uh, they're quite magnetic still, um, but you can definitely see some corrosion 
or some sort of reaction. So that's what a piece looks like coming out. Uh, there's still a piece stuck on it. Like I said, it's quite magnetic still. Um, so obviously it didn't react all the way through. But you can definitely tell something happened. For instance, here's a magnet before it goes in. Um, I just broke it apart. See, it's a nice silvery inside and a darker gray outside. I'm going to combine the two or compare the two. Come on. There it goes. So, this gives me at least a little bit of hope. Um, I have run out of sodium hydroxide and I need to go ahead and pick up uh, some Teflon tape and whatnot. So what's going to end up happening is that there is going to be a part two of this where hopefully I can refine this and get this working a little bit better. Um, but until next time.